need ideas, a bed would be fine. A nice big bed, and... And yes, a working TV. Uh... I'd better stop before I go too far. Unless... <clears throat> As I see it, a stranger might almost believe that you like getting yourself in danger. Yeah, I guess so. Don't worry. I didn't mean anything negative by that. I easily noticed that about you. I appreciate your behavior. In my former life, I never went headlong into danger. But back then, the world was different. Watching your activities really gives me a bit of hope. Maybe this world, or at least this area, can change once again. I hope you will continue resolutely against all the murderers and slave traders in the Commonwealth. I'll do what I can. I know. And that's why I feel safe by your side. I mean, I was always afraid that you wouldn't do the right thing. But you always did. You have to know that I was taken from the cryotanks by raiders. And the first thing they did was ram a gun into my face. They probably did that with all the cryo inmates. Later, we woke up dazed in cages. Just for them to sell us. All the time, us women in particular, were afraid that the raiders would rape us. Fortunately, and to her misfortune, her boss wanted to sell us to a group that would not have bought us if we were pregnant. I think that is the only reason why our captivity was half quiet. If it did not happen like that, I don't even want to think about what would have happened to us. The way I first came to know this new world, I found out very quickly and clearly how much goes wrong. To see someone who fights against people like those that captured me is really something special to me. I hope that it will always be this way, that we are making this world safer, together. How do you think things are between us? I think we are a pretty good team. As I see it, we've already watched each other's backs countless times. Together, we can achieve anything. Phew, it always makes me feel good to talk with you. Shall we continue? So, how's life treating you? Hey there. Hmm? You know what? Since we talked, I'm feeling swell. Look at the two of us here in Sanctuary. Prepare hey for the Head future. My way. Sure, let's go. Will do. Hey. Just say the word. Hi. Time to hit the road. Man. Rather be off murdering a pint. This will do. Now, something worth keeping in mind is that unlike many of the studio signing deals with Epic, CD Projekt Red is currently a self-sufficient company that probably doesn't need the cash infusion. As of September 2017, the company was reported to be worth north of $2 billion, sustained by the success of the Witcher franchise, as well as consistent revenue stream from GOG. Suffice to say that they're in no hurry to give away control over how they publish their products for cash, whereas other publishers and developers might actually need the cash infusion from an exclusivity contract to fund future projects. I can understand why indie developers in particular might be attracted by the 88% cut they'll be given from selling the game on Epic Game Store. I get why they might lean towards the additional money they'll get by signing away exclusivity. Now in the case of state of THQ Nordic, Coach Media, and Deep Silver is like, so it's hard for me to say how pivotal it was for the future of the Metro series to make that deal with Epic. On the one hand, they may have had enough money to carry on, but they decided to make more money anyway, because why the hell not? Or it could very well be that the extra money from the contract will go a long way in securing future Metro releases and other endeavors. But as far as CD Projekt Red is concerned, there is not a whole lot of incentive for them to sign a 
deal that may be more of a detriment with the potential to garner backlash and change their priceless good standing with the gaming community. Furthermore, CD Projekt Red has always carried yes. itself nobly in the eyes of consumers. They've always been adamant Powering about doing up. the right thing and sticking to the core values. Duty. And their track record, as I said before, if is you say so. so. I doubt that they'd be tempted to take the path of undesired timed exclusivity deals, even if they were made a damn good offer. So bless your heart, CD Projekt Red. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep holding on to those values so many others seem to be relinquishing. And I cannot wait to see what you accomplish Sweet. with Cyberpunk 2077. These are one man's take on CD Projekt Red's latest tweet anyway. I'd love to hear what your take is in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update and discussion video. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out. Won't be able to hack this. Hey. Do something for you? Think you can unlock that terminal? Sure thing. Got a second now. You all right, Nick? I wouldn't normally bother you with this sort of thing, but, uh, well, I know I can trust you at this point. For as long as I can remember, I've been getting these uh, flashes, memories of places I've never been, things I've never seen. Memories of Nick's. They're not bad, they're just, um, they're just this inescapable reminder that I'm not the person I think I am, that I'm not a person at all. I'm just a machine pretending to be human. What kind of memories? Everything. Old cases, old loves. I found myself running background on cases only to realize everyone involved's been dead for 200 years. Don't get me wrong, I know I'm in Nick's debt. These memories, they've, they've kept me alive. Nick was a hell of a cop. A guy with good instincts and a good heart. I always counted myself lucky they didn't load me up with some ex-con or whatever type might volunteer to let folks tinker with their gray matter. But it's thanks to Nick that I pass for human. Why I get to live cushy in Diamond City, and every other synth is shot on sight. I know I got it good, but... My entire life, I owe to Nick. Everything that makes me who I am. My judgment, my speech, hell, even my name. They're his. And I can't do a damn thing about it, because without them, without them, I'm nothing. A shell. All I want is a life where I have something I can call my own. Is there any way we could separate you and Nick? Don't think I haven't tried. Lost near a month of my life last time I mustered up the courage to let someone play brain surgeon on me. No. This is how it's gonna be. Living with another man's name. Another man's life. You've already built a life for yourself, Nick. You've got the agency, a home, friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. You know, I... I'm just gonna need some time to think on this. 
I appreciate you hearing me out. Yeah, you're, you're a real good friend. Thanks. You know, there is this chunk of Nick Valentine history I've been hoping to put a bow on for a while now. I could use a hand if you're willing to take a crack at it. What kind of history are we talking here? Well, this one's straight out of the archives. Once upon a time, in the land of Boston, there lived a king of organized crime. Eddie Winter. He was a bad man. We did a lot of bad things, hurt a lot of innocent people, but he knew the end was coming. So he sealed himself inside a personal shelter, located underneath the sub shop he used as a headquarters. Eddie Winter was from my time. Real scumbag. The story gets even more twisted. The arrogant bastard wanted to cheat death live forever, so he could come out of that shelter someday into this brave new world. Sound familiar? Only Eddie didn't want to be a frozen banana. No cryo sleep for him, no. He invested his money in some sick, crazy radiation experiment. You don't mean... To tell me he used that radiation to... That's right. Eddie Winter went and turned himself into a ghoul. 200 years before it was fashionable. Hell, he was probably the first one. And I'm convinced that he's still locked inside that shelter. Safe and sound. Ready to come out and begin his evil reign all over again. I'm gonna find him and kill him. So that never happens. You in? All right, Nick. Let's get the bad guy. Good. Now, I know where Winter's vault is, but the door is sealed with a complex numerical code. Lucky for us, Winter's arrogance knew no bounds. Back in the day, he recorded ten holotapes, incriminating different criminal associates. On each one, he hit a single number. We find all of those holotapes, we get all the numbers. We get all the numbers, we get the code. And then we get Winter. I've been putting together a file on this one for a while now. There's a pair of holotapes in here worth listening to. Uh, including one of Winter's. I managed to snatch from the Cambridge Police Evidence Lockup before getting swarmed by ferals. My gut tells me the Boston Police Evidence Terminals are the key to cracking this one. It's probably worth paying a visit to any of the departments you might have stumbled across. Whatever you say.
Yes. My shoulder still hurts from that fight the other day. I need a long break. Bullshit. Not much left for this plug, is there? We'll all be better off without you around. found something useful.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Cyberpunk 2077 news update. The following information comes from Please. the official I sent to the air citizens. Oh. 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 fire zone. Oh. Oh. The information was in Polish, but the oh. oh. translate the page will be translated to something that seems pretty accurate. Oh. Just enter the first of 2019. We still don't know what the game's really is and how it will likely be long term for the Cyberpunk 2077's release content. Before asking if, despite all this, there are still plans to release yet another AAA game by 2021. For additional context, what this user is referring to is this page right here from the official CD Projekt Red website, featuring a post titled, Strategy of the CD Projekt Red Capital Group for the year 2016 to 2021. In it, you can find a number of noteworthy bullet points, particularly if you scroll down here to the plan section. Where it says CD Projekt Red Studio, you can see how it lists that 2016 saw the release of Witcher 3's Blood and Wine expansion, and then for their roadmap between 2017 and 2021, it's listed that they'll be releasing Cyberpunk 2077 as well as quote, another AAA RPG title. On top of that, this other bullet point states that they are also planning expansion of their core franchises with additional media content and product lines, likely insinuating DLCs and expansions akin to what we saw with Witcher 3. In reference to this post, what the user is basically saying is we don't even know when Cyberpunk 2077 will be out. 2021 is only two years away. All hands are on deck for Cyberpunk 2077 right now, and yet, can you seriously release both Cyberpunk as is as good as mine? The most popular assumption will probably be that you could be looking at a brand new Witcher game. While I wouldn't hold my breath for Witcher 4 or playing as Geralt of Rivia again, a Witcher spin-off that puts players in the shoes of another character is not an impossible prospect. Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales, for example, a standalone single-player campaign for Gwent, featured a story that took place before the events of the first Witcher, and players got to play as Queen Meave, the ruler of Lyria and Rivia. Who's to say CD Projekt Red won't follow a similar model, but for a true AAA Witcher role-playing experience that they've been secretly working on? It's either that or it's some brand new IP, but whatever it is, it will seemingly be announced and released within two and a half years. Not gonna lie, I'm wondering how CD Projekt Red plans to pull off releasing two AAA titles by 2021. Cyberpunk 2077 by itself seems like a daunting enough task for the studio, and I- You're the one that wants to use G519's body? I... I just don't have the caps to keep her alive anymore. Life support ain't easy or cheap, you know? I was gonna pull the plug on her. What you're proposing sounds... a little better. Better than letting her rot. What do you think she would want? Damned if I know. It's not like I even knew her before. Hmm. Since G5 has no one else... For what it's worth, you have my consent. Thank you. I know this must be difficult. Yeah. I'll leave you to it. Curie. Let's begin. Curie, terminate all non-essential operations. I feel like it. All right. Connection. Um, hello? I hope control. everything worked out okay. G5's already been prepped. So this shouldn't take long. Yes. There. <gasps> My chest? What is happening? Just breathe. It's an autonomic function. Just let your body do what it is. I... I feel... I feel so strange. Listen to me. Can you hear me? What is your name? My designation is Contagion's Vulnerability Robotic Infirmary Engineer. 
Oh, Curie. <laughs> you had me worried there. Do not concern yourself. I feel better now. Good. Very good. Now let's test some cognitive functions. What is one plus two? Three. If I threw a baseball at your head, what would you do? Uh, move. Think of a strong memory. The first that comes to mind. Tell me about it. <sighs> Dr. Barrow was very old. He was the last living scientist in my section of Vault 81. He was on his bed, very weak. He said to me, Curie, you must... And he died before he finished the sentence. Oh, my insights feel peculiar. What is that? You might be feeling grief for a friend. This unit has no friends, but there. My chest is tightening when I think of poor Dr. Borrow. The operation appears successful. But I think it will take a lot of adjustment for your new friend. She may need your help to make the transition. Thank you, Doctor, for this opportunity. I wonder if...